morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It is a pleasure for me to share with you the latest S&D forecast for Soabin and Soamio prepared within the framework of G20 aims. I will first walk you through our latest forecast for global soybean supply and demand, and then briefly present outlook for the global soamio market. Next slide. Let's now start with global soybean s and In a nutshell, in 21-22, global soybean production is forecast to continue increasing, possibly reaching a new record high, while global utilization is estimated to expand by an about average 3%. World carry-out stocks are seen recovering moderately from the multi-year low registered in 2021, and international trade is expected to rebound from last season's subdued performance. Let's now have a closer look at key players, starting with production. As you can see from the table, the anticipated rise in global production is led by the United States and Brazil. Specifically, as for the Northern Hemisphere producers, the US reported a rebound in production thanks to a combination of higher plantings and yields, whereas in China, soybean production is seen contracting on lower area, with farmers reported to have favored maize due to profitable prices and the relatively more attractive subsidies of the crop. Elsewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, a recovery in production has been reported from the Black Sea region, while outputs are expected to fall in India and Canada. In the Southern Hemisphere, where sowing operations are currently underway, production in Brazil is forecast to reach a new record, thanks to a further rise in plantings, as well as favorable weather conditions that facilitated a rapid planting progress. While in Argentina, output is also seen rebounding from last season's reduced level on expected expectations of yield recoveries, although plantings are expected to decline year on year, as farmers could prefer planting maize. maize. Yes. Moving to utilization, we expect global soybean uptake to expand moderately by around 3% year on year, which would confirm the resilience of crushings during the COVID-19 pandemic. On the right-hand side, you can see that we expect China to account for the bulk of the global consumption growth tied to rising demand from the country's feed producers. Moreover, crush is also expected to expand in the world's key producing countries, that is Brazil, US, and Argentina, tied to rising supplies and also growing demand for soy oil and meal for both domestic use and export. Let me remind you that I will also walk you through our latest market outlook for soy meal, the main product of soybean crushing towards the end of my presentation. This slide shows how our consumption forecasts fare relative to global production. As you can see, world production is expected to outpace global crash slightly in 2021-2022, uh, which has implications for global inventories. The chart on the left shows that global stocks are set to recover moderately from last season's multi-year low. In the United States, a moderate uh, replenishment of inventories seems possible, largely underpinned by prospects of near record production. Similarly, Brazil is also set to use part of its bumper crop to replenish domestic stocks. Meanwhile, in Argentina, stock disposals could be required to support the rising soil oil and soil meal export demand. And lastly, China's nominal inventories could drop slightly, considering the country's slow import pace to date. As for the stock to use ratios, both the, the global stock to use and the global and the stock to disappearance ratio for major exporters are seen rebounding marginally, although both would remain well below average levels, as you can see in the chart to the left. Turning to global trade in 21-22, global soybean transactions are expected to rebound from last season's reduced level. Note that in the chart to the left, we show the data of world soybean exports for October-September marketing year. Interestingly, for 2021, our estimate for global October-September imports exceeds our aggregate exports estimate by some 5 million tons, where parts of this gap could be explained by shipping lags, a still rather big mismatch between the global imports and the exports. I'm curious to hear your views about the likely destinations of that nominal import surplus. 
Back to our forecast for 21-22, the chart on the right shows that we expect China to raise its purchase by about 1 million ton, or close to 1% in 21-22. This is similar to the growth rate seen in 2021, but below the average level recorded during the past five years. The anticipated deceleration would be linked to the aforementioned perspective drawdown in China's stockpiles. Imports by Egypt, Mexico, Thailand, and a few other Asian countries would also increase. Elsewhere, a contraction in purchases is anticipated in EU and Brazil. Remember, Brazil had to import some soil to recover domestic demand in the past two seasons when national stocks were almost depleted. Focusing now on the major exporters, Brazil's shipments are seen expanding again in 2122 possibly matching the all-time high observed in 1920, whereas U.S. exports are anticipated to decline slightly due to robust domestic demand and the slow pace of export sales, particularly to China. Changes in the patterns of exports are shown in the chart on the right, with Brazil's share in global export market expected to remain about 50%, whereas the share of U.S. could linger around 30%. Now let's have a look at the international soybean prices. As you know, reflecting tight fundamentals in 2021, soybean prices embarked on an upward traje trajectory in mid 2020 and reached the peak in May of this year. Since then, international prices lost some of their strength with the key drivers for such softening summarized on the slide. They include on the supply side, first the outlook of record uh, soybean crop in the U.S., and second, a rapid planting pace in Brazil amid favorable weather conditions, and third, reports of higher than expected 2021 ending stocks for the U.S. And then on the demand side, the key drivers include first, relatively subdued soybean purchases by China, and also the lower than expected crushing demand, both U.S. and globally. Now, moving to the sawmill market, I will briefly go through global uh, S&D and then focus on the production and the utilization in the following slides. The table on the left summarizes global uh, sawmill balance. In short, global sawmill output in 2021-2022 is forecast to raise to an all-time high, linked to the prospects of record soybean harvests. While the utilization would also grow steadily by, by about 2.5%, uh, with the global soybean production outpacing consumption, care out stocks are seen increasing from multi year lows observed in 2021. And lastly, international trade in soybean is expected to continue expanding. Let's now have a closer look at the soybean uh, soybean production, adding a country focus. The pie chart on the left uh, shows the perspective composition of global soybean output by major crushers which is actually in line with the pattern of the recent years. China, the world leading uh, soybean importer, is set to account for about 30% of global soybean production, followed by the US, Brazil, Argentina, and the EU. Looking at the year-year -year changes for 21-22 on the right-hand side, while China is expected to drive global growth, other major producers are also seen expanding soybean crushings. With the exception of the EU, as the recovery is in the soil, sunflower seed supplies could partially replace the EU's soybean soil crush. For the US, it's worth mentioning that during the past month, crushing operations were largely oil driven, as, as Seth mentioned, a trend that would continue given robust demand for, from the biodiesel sector. Now, turning to uh, soil utilization, the chart on the left shows the trend in global soil consumption in past few seasons. After stag stagnating in 1819 due to outbreaks of African swine fever, world soil uptake rebounded in the following season, primarily underpinned by a rapid reconstitution of hog herds in China. However, with China's even hog inventories now back to pre-ASF level, and with the prevalence of poor feeding margins amid low pork prices, we expect the growth in protein meal demand to slow down in 21 22 Elsewhere, soil uh, utilization is expected to rise in Brazil and the US. Lastly, let's also have a look at the international soil prices. Different from the path shown for soil meal, soybean values, 
So Mio quotations reached their peak in the beginning of 2021, supported by robust fee demand from China back then for rebuilding of domestic hawkers and also logistics trains out of Argentina, the world's top sawmill exporter. Since January 2021, quotations trended downward under the influence of seasonally rising supplies from South America, as well as slow down importing meal uptake, mainly in China. As of October, sawmill quotations from Argentina upriver dropped below their year earlier levels. This brings me to my last slide. In summary, the current uh, forecasts point to improvements in global soil supplies of soybeans and especially soil meal. However, for soybeans, global stocks and stock to use ratios could well remain below the average level recorded in recent years. Therefore, although international soybean prices retreated in recent months, they are still lingering within a multi year high range. Let me conclude with a list of nearby drivers and the key uncertainties. First, on the supply side, market participants are watching closely both harvest figures from the US and crop prospects in South America, particularly planting progress in Brazil and Argentina, as well as weather conditions in the coming months need to be closely monitored. On the demand side, the evolution of the COVID-19 pandemic still bears watching. While international trade may be continue to be spared, demand for soybean products may continue to be affected by the pandemic. In addition, fresh outbreaks of ASF in Asia and elsewhere cannot be excluded. As for vegetable oil uptake by biodiesel producers, it re remains to be seen whether and how long the robust demand linked to higher planting mandates and unprecedented interest in the production of renewable diesel is going to last. In case global crushing continue to be oil driven, additional soil meal uh, supplies would need to be disposed of. Finally, as usual, trade policies uh, by individual countries, as well as macroeconomic conditions, such as energy prices and exchange rates, will need to be monitored carefully. And this ends my presentation. Thank you for your attention.